Hi, I'm Jim Moyna. Welcome to Moyna Bass Fishes. All right, we had another practice day here on Sam Rayburn and another day of discovery and learning, but really not amounting to anything that I'm going to be fishing come competition. In fact, it was really, uh, it's really a, a, a remarkable day in a couple, a couple of ways. Um, okay, so I've been fishing mostly deep during practice, and today I decided to go even deeper. So instead of looking in 10 to 20, and I haven't been catching much other than small fish, I decided to go 20 plus all the way out to 35. So I got fishing out, I was out, uh, out on the main lake fishing and this was just amazing. So I'm not catching much. Every once in a while I'll catch a, a hybrid or a random spotted bass. And I got on this one point and it just it looked it's just like a lot of the other points and there was if you look around with the electronics you can see you know some fish moving around some spotted bass here and there some schools of hybrids well i caught i got over the school of spotted bass and there's and the spotted bass in sam rayburn aren't that big nothing to, i mean they're not gonna do you any good at all like a two pound spotted bass in, in Rayburn is actually a, a fairly nice one. So anyways, I, I, I get over the school and I'm not, I, I still don't know how this came to be, but <laughs> the fish started collecting. You know, when I caught my first couple, I, uh, uh, put the Minn Kota in spot lock and and as I the longer I sat in this one place it seemed like the more fish that were collecting underneath the boat there I was in 30 foot of water and the fish were straight down the boat in fact they were using the shade of the boat for cover because out in front of the boat there wasn't many fish at all uh, with your active target you can see straight you can see forward, of course, you know, whatever you set your range to, you see down, and then you can see a little, like 10 feet behind. Well, the fish were showing up straight down under the trolling motor and behind, which was where the shade was, was back behind me. Under the trolling motor was lit by the sun behind me a shade. So, and I swear, just more and more fish just started showing up in the in the shade there and I was just fishing straight down for an hour and a half I was just dropping I wasn't if I dropped it up in front of the boat in front of the trolling motor I could get a bite maybe but the best thing was to do is uh, so I'd stand on the front deck I'd turn around and I'd either drop it right next to the passenger seat or drop it uh, next to the driver's console because there's more shade back there and that's man I cut for an hour and a half I was catching fish just one after another most of them were spotted bass uh, there were some random uh, hybrid bass in there and uh, it was just I couldn't believe how many fish was there and, and I'd look down and sometimes the school would move forward out of the shade and get under the trolling motor and there uh, and there'd just be ton, just oodles of them and then and then uh, you'd have just random schools of hybrids would just come flying by. And let me tell you right now, those hybrids are just, they're in a whole nother, they're just uh, in a whole nother just buzz. I mean, they're like up here as far as just, just hyped up, man, because those school they're just constantly just just roaming at a fast pace roaming across the areas because I'll, I'll spot them and uh, like with my active target for example I'll spot them you know like 40 feet away for example and by the time I cast there and try to get the jig to fall to them 
I mean, they've already moved moved on. So it's really, you really have to figure out which direction they're moving and then lead the lead your cast. And when you're in 30 foot of water, it's hard to, it's really a hard thing to, uh, you know, to line up your jig falling like this and to line up the school that's swimming like that. So you got to, it's it's kind of an interesting challenge to do that. Um, but if I if I got my jig to meet up with the school, it was a bite on them hybrids every time. But by the time you catch that one and land it and release, you know, land it, um, unhook it, release it, that's that was your only shot because you'd get back on the uh, Lawrence Act of Target and you may not you may not even relocate. I'll have the range set at 80 on mine and I'll spin at 360 degrees around and I won't see the school anywhere. I mean, they're already gone, <laughs> completely gone. And here's another interesting thing about those hybrid schools. They are attracted to the noise of the transducer because I will see them, say, it'll be, for example, 25, 30 feet, and I'll be seeing them moving towards me, and every one, every one of them schools, every time, as soon as they got within about 25 feet of me, all of a sudden you'd start seeing them, and they'd be close to the bottom, right? All of a sudden they start peeling off and just racing right up to the boat. And usually they're going past the trolling motor and they're going for the uh, the back transducer. And I was assuming it was the transducer noise that is what they were going for. Um, maybe it was the sh maybe it was the shade, but see they wouldn't stay there though. They would they would just they just rush up to the boat and then they would dissipate from there. So I'm not. sure. It just seems like maybe it was the pinging of the transducers what was bringing them in. But I don't know that for sure. Maybe maybe they just saw the shady object up there and wanted to ch check it out. I don't know. But it's really but every one of them schools did that. Very interesting. And they they they're just so they're moving so fast those schools. And uh it's just the may I mean this is kind of stuff you just never knew about that was happening. That uh, that the forward-facing sonar uh, shows you just the, the intensity of these hybrid schools is just crazy. I I've never really had a striped bass school on my um, sonar, but I wonder what that would be like too. That'd be really interesting. So, anyways, uh, yeah, that was one heck of a spotted bass set up there man they just and it's funny that um let's see an ambulance is here anyways he's a couple rows over um anyhow it, and it, that never happened again the rest of the day where they got up in the shade like that man it was just it was just something too bad they weren't like large mouths and i kept i kept telling myself well Eventually, I'll find a largemouth spot. Instead of, you know, find a spot like that, it'll be largemouths, and it won't be the spotted bass. But that never came to be. My largemouth fishing pretty much sucked all day out deep. Did not do very well at all on those. Um, so, yeah, what else uh, What else did we find out today? Um, and I was using a jig, a little swim bait, a jig head, a all-terrain tackle, smally smasher jig head with a little swim bait on there. That's how I was catching all those fish. Uh, and it was interesting, with, it's interesting how the spotted bass and the hybrids would hit that thing the same way, where they, you'd get a lot of fish just ramming it before you'd, you'd probably get like five or six, boom, 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 and then until you finally hooked one. And it's just a small, I mean, it's a kind of a small bait, so I don't know why they were feeling like they had to ram it before they actually hit it, but it was very interesting in that. And smallmouths will do the same thing, by the way. Um, like, if you're doing the moping technique, uh, it's the, the smallmouths will do the same thing. You'll be hanging your jig head over the side with a plastic on there, and you'll just boom and then nothing there boom nothing there 
and then maybe the third or fourth one you hook up a smallie so and it, it was the same thing out there today with the hybrids and with the uh, spotted bass for sure so that's just kind of interesting behavior why they do that I don't know so um, and then so the last half hour of the day I decide I'm going to go I'm going to go fish shallow grass or, or grass anyways not necessarily shallow shallower than where I've been so I'm going to fish like 10 foot and less in the grass and so I'm doing that for a while I catch one and um, and, and the sun's down and I'm I'm just don't want to go in having too much fun but every day has its end sadly every day of fishing has its end so I put my rod I tell myself you know what you're done it's time to go the sun's down it's been down for 15 10 15 minutes so I start wrapping some rods up and then all of a sudden I notice this commotion about I don't know 75 yards away up on shore up not on shore but near shore and I'm like what are those gar surfacing gar doing that I mean it kind of looks like breaking fish from here but it can't really be breaking fish up there in that shallow water so anyways I'm like all right well let's just see I don't have any top waters on the deck right now <laughs> if I want a top water it's in my rod locker so I put the Minn Kota on full blast and just start going over there and I get closer and closer and sure enough it I mean seriously the sun has been down it's like it's been down for some time now but you know you still have it's kind of like half light half dark and sure enough those are bass and I'm like okay I'm gonna dig out my top water <laughs> pull up pull up my top water and and in no time I'm catching these fish and uh it was just it was a lot of a lot of fun the last 20 minutes and i was still and seriously i kept fishing right until it was there was just a hint of light in the western sky when i quit i mean i hardly i could hardly see i could i could barely see what i was even casting at the only way i could oh my gosh the only way i could do it is if i uh if I position the boat so the twink, the the little bit of brightness in the sky would highlight the uh, um, the bushes and the flooded stuff along the shoreline, so I wouldn't throw into the bushes and throw it to the outer edge of them. And they were still biting when I quit. I mean, not quite as good as you know when I first got got in that area, but uh, I don't know it was interesting because. There was a certain area where they're busting, so I caught like five or six there, and they weren't big fish. They were like, um, I mean, most of most of them were 14 inches or a little better, which is a keeper, but no, none of them were over two pounds that I had, or for sure over two and a quarter. So once I worked that area, then I just kept going down the shoreline where I didn't see any fish breaking, but I still caught some still was getting bites so uh kind of gives you an idea how many fish are in an area really so all right well um and lastly uh, if anybody knows this is okay this is all your car and truck mechanics on my chevy silverado it's a 2002 the fan only works on the highest setting number five settings one two three and four do not work is there any simple fix for that to get all those settings back working is there a little just a little component i got to plug and uh just swap plug and play it in there and uh but i don't know that's kind of annoying that that fan's going bad but I wonder if not, I just sure hope that five, at least five keeps up because I don't want to have to drive all the way to Minnesota with no fan. <laughs> That'd be a warm drive. But anyways, all right, that's enough out of, out of me for tonight. Uh, tomorrow will be the last day of practice. Not sure what I'm going to do. Um, 
I'm like, I just know there's, I know, I know there is a largemouth spot where there's largemouth packed in there. It's the same way these spotted bass were packed into where they were. There's going to be a spot where there's largemouths packed in there. And uh, maybe not as many as the spotted bass, but there will be a lot of largemouths packed in one area, and they'll all be really easy to catch. And a guy could get a big bag doing that. But I have not seen it, and I've looked and looked and looked, but I know it's out there. There's a spot like that out here right now. Anyways, over.